Hello everyone, Mike here. I hope that you're all doing extremely well. And for this week's episode, I've decided to go down the educational route somewhat. And the reason for this is because over the last couple of weeks, I fell victim to a shortcut key in Lightroom that I was not too familiar with. So in this segment, I've decided to run through the Lightroom shortcuts, or at least the Lightroom shortcuts that I use most frequently. So let's get to it. Let's go down into Lightroom. And you will see that I have created Wild Art Diaries, Diaries Episode 14 collection. And I'm going to be using the images within this collection to run through this bit of a tutorial. All right, so let's get started. The way I usually work when it comes to Lightroom is I will import all my images. I will then sort them, categorize them, and delete the junk that I don't want, and obviously file and keep the ones that I do. So let's get straight into this. All right. So now while we're previewing um, these images, you can see it is pretty crammed. This whole area is taking up space on the left. The whole panel on the right is taking up space. And so is the panel at the bottom and the panel at the top. So an easy way to get rid of these is hitting the tab key on your keyboard and it'll take away the two sides. So now you've got a lot more space to work with. You can also click the little arrow on the top and the little arrow down on the bottom and this will minimize and drop these uh, bars away. You'll see there's one more bar which is your toolbar down here at the bottom, this guy down here, and this is what I fell victim to. Shortcut for this is just clicking T, your, your toolbar disappears. You hit T again, it reappears. And this is what was my frustration over the last two weeks. I couldn't figure out how I can get this back. Finally figured it out. All right, so here we go. Now we've got this imported sequence of, of images and we need to now start sorting them. And what I usually tend to do is you can sort them by looking at it in grid view like this. You can also sort them by pushing E will enlarge the image. By pushing G, it'll take you back to grid view. By pushing F, this will take you straight into full screen. Pushing F again takes you out of full screen. Or you could have just pushed G to take you back to grid view. All right, so the way I usually tend to do this is I will now have imported all of these images from my morning safari, whatever it may be, or my day out photographing. And what I would do is I would usually enlarge the image. Most people tend to prefer this method. You can also, by hitting T, bring the toolbar back and you'll see thumbnails enlarge the size of your thumbnails. But I prefer actually enlarging the whole image. You just get a bit of a better reference. I'm going to hit T again to get rid of toolbar. Now I've got the maximized size out of this enlarged image. Because if I had, say for example, my modules down here, my sidebar, you see how much smaller the image is. All right, that's up. We don't want this. So you hit tab, get rid of all of that, and you are now working with an enlarged image. Another thing that I enjoy doing when it comes to looking at images and sorting images, if you hit the letter L, this is light out. So I'm going to hit letter L. You hit it once, you can still see a faint around the edges. Um, basically, you can see the background, but it is dark and fading out quite a bit. You hit it a second time, it blacks it out entirely. Hit it a third time, and it brings it back to normal. So I usually hit L just to darken up that exterior a little bit so that I have a better reference and my eyes drawn to what's happening on in the frame uh, most of the time. So what you can do here is, and this is the way I do it, everyone's going to have their own methods and own ways, is you can either star rate an image, one star, two star, three star, four star, or a five star image just by hitting the numbers one, two, three, four, or five on your keyboard. Okay, but you will see that it has now stayed on this image. For this purpose, I'm going to quickly hit G. I'm going to hit L and L again. You can see it's now been given a five-star rating. Yeah. I'm going to hit T to bring the thumbnails 
up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So let's start rating this. I'm going to go back to this image. I'm going to hit 1. So just for the purpose of this image, so that you can see the stars actually being assigned to these images, what I usually do is I star and x-rate images um, when it comes to sorting my images. So all my 1 star images are the ones I'm going to keep, and all my x-rated images so these are your rejected flags now if i push x you will see it's been set as a rejected file and it gets a little black flag so these are going to be the files that i delete what some people do is they will hit the letter p which is pick or flagging images you can see it's got a white flag so their white picked images are the ones they want to keep all right we'll hit p again it's the one I want to keep. I am a major fan of birds, but for purposes of this exercise, I'm going to reject this image. I do not want it. And so, but as you can see, I have to manually now go across to every single image and rate them. What you can do is you can push and hold shift. So pushing and holding shift, hitting the letter P, it's going to flag and pick this particular image and it's automatically going to jump to the reflection of the giraffe. So I'm pushing and holding shift, and I push P, it jumps over automatically. I don't like this reflection very much, so I don't want it. I'm going to reject it. I'm going to push X. It's going to mark it as a rejected um, file. And so we go on. Once this whole process is done, and you have picked and flagged and rejected all of your images, you can delete the junks, junk by going into Attributes, Clicking, um, selecting these, the uh, rejection flag, highlights all of them, push backspace, and it deletes these files. Okay. And for this purpose, I'm not going to delete them permanently because I want to keep all of my images. Okay, so back into this. So once this has been done and you've rejected all your junk if I may say and you are ready to keep and work on your files that you you like most and the ones that you've kept you can then go into these files and start this process all over again and what we're going to do now is this is where most people will start giving it a one two three four or a five star rating depending on how good their images are okay and also, what you can do is you can color rate your images by pushing 6, you will see it gets a red label. Pushing 7 gives you yellow, 8 gives you green, and a 9 gives you blue. Okay, if you push 9 again, it removes the blue label and it's not color coded anymore. So many people have many different reasons as to why and when they will color rate or code or label their images. What I tend to do is when I'm going to write a blog or I'm busy writing a blog, I will use the red label, for example. If I think this image or this image will work very well on Instagram, my Instagram images are labeled blue, for example. If you want to publish it into a competition or for prints or whatever it may be, and you think that, for example, this will be a great print, you can label all your prints yellow. It is entirely up to you and however you see fit. All right, so this is just to show that you can color code your images. Another tool I really enjoy and a shortcut I really enjoy is you'll see I've selected the first lion image, silhouette of this lion, or rimlet, sidelet image of this lion. I'm going to push and hold shift and click on the last one. It will highlight all of them. And then by pushing the letter N, it takes you into survey mode. And what survey mode allows you to do is now you can look at an entire sequence of images and compare each and every one of them. So for example, in this image, there's a bit of grass here. I'm not a big fan of that, so get rid of him. Um, yes, his head's a bit low, too much space on top over there. Get rid of that. And this seems okay. I like this. And his head to me is at a better angle in this image, so I am going to get rid of that. If you hit N again, sorry, G, you will be left with the last three highlighted images, and then you can give these guys a three or four stars, and maybe 
the first couple of ones a one star rating or even reject them and delete them at a later stage so that is survey mode you can also compare images so by highlighting say two final products and pushing and holding shift and selecting the second one and push C you can now compare only the two images and see which one you favor most and obviously make your decision from there let's actually now move into the develop the full develop side of things over here so you can either in your toolbar on the top click develop it takes you into develop hitting G takes you back into grid view and library so what I'm going to do is you can hit the letter D and D takes you straight into develop and another shortcut is going back to grid view by pushing G if you push the letter R it takes you into the develop module as well as the cropping tool because what I prefer doing in most of my images I will crop my image as to how I want it so I don't like that tree on the right hand side of the frame over there and I say done it looks like a much better crop to me and let's go back into this cropping mode because you can see that this horizon this wall they're walking on this damn wall is a bit skewed it doesn't look too great so what you can do is push and hold command and you'll see that your cursor from the hand changes to the angle tool and you just click on one side of the horizon pull it across and there you have it it immediately straightens up the horizon for you which is pretty cool but within the cropping tool as well what you can do you can currently see I've got the rules of third running over here if you push the letter O it changes it to the golden mean and so on what I tend to enjoy using most is my rule of thirds I don't really wander off into all the different overlays I tend to stick to my rule of thirds and I prefer using this one most another quick shortcut within the cropping tool is if you push the letter X it will change it from landscape orientation as it is right now to portrait and back each time you push it it will change it to and from work but for this particular image we obviously want to keep it landscape because the story of the image is coming from the left of the frame all the way into the right cool so once we're done with that we can hit done what I tend to do after cropping and straightening my horizons is making sure that I have no dust spots within this image so you can see this is a spot removal tool so you can either click on that or the shortcut straight into it is the letter Q it takes you into the spot removal tool if you hit the letter A or click on visualize spots but I'm gonna hit the letter A takes you straight into that and you will see that this slider will show you all the different tonal levels but for, for now we can see that there's quite a few dust spots in this image obviously I'm gonna hit A again get rid of visualizing this dust spot but you can't really see any dust spots within this this image right now but if I hit A you can see quite a few so I'm gonna push and hold spacebar so when you're in any localized or special adjustment tool hitting spacebar changes your cursor from the actual tool into a little zoom icon let go of spacebar you get your icon back so I'm just gonna hit A to get rid of the overlay or the visualizing the dust spot but you can see over here that there is a bit of a dust spot so now if I just click over on that it chooses what Lightroom believes to be the best reference to disguise that dust spot and it replaces it all right let's go look for another one push a and you'll see this quite a bit so we can zoom into this and you can do this across the whole image and just go and select all these little dust spots it takes some time but it will pay off in the end because it not only is a better image but yeah you know, I truly believe if you're putting out images out there with dust spots on you, know, you do not have too much respect for your image so yeah remove your dust spots cool so that is it for for dust spots I'm not going to run through the this whole image but there is quite a few so I have to go fix these up later and again here 
we can just say done and happy days we can then move on and do our globalized adjustments throughout this whole image and then if needed you can come do more localized adjustments within um, the particular image once you're done with this and I've done a few adjustments to this image global adjustments to this image for the purpose of this video if you hit the backslash button it takes you to what the image used to be the before and you hit it again it takes you straight back into after but if you want to compare the two side by side hitting the letter Y will show you your before image on the left and your after image after all your adjustments on the right so this will be a great way to see um, what you've actually done and the differences your edits have have made to the end prod product of or the end result of this image brilliant but in talking about special adjustment brushes let's take the or tools I'm gonna to take the brush for example and I'm gonna go and brush the sky all right right now you can just see exposures being lifted a bit because I'm at plus 1.0 and a double click on effects it'll take everything back to zero which is great so if say for example your setting was set like that a lot of people tend to struggle to get it back to zero all the time just double click either on each word contrast highlights or just double click on effects if you're busy with special adjustments and it'll drop everything straight down to zero again which is always a great help a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to get these back to zero okay but now I've brushed the sky but now I, I'm struggling to see where I'm actually brushing so if you hit the letter O this is overlay and O for overlay is now the green area is where whatever effects I make in my special adjustments over here only the green area is going to be affected okay if you're not a big fan of working with or on a mouse um, or struggle using two fingers on a, a mouse pad on a laptop you can increase and decrease the size of your brush or your tool by using your square brackets will increase it and decrease it another thing when it comes to uh, brushing and, and special adjustments is the word flow so this is actually how many times you have to flow or brush over an area to get it to the 91 or 50 percent density and you can also use your numbers here one through to nine if I hit one it takes flow to a very subtle flow can you see that so you can barely see it being added here you have to flow over it multiple times to get it to the density of 49 if I hit number nine it takes flow straight to 90 percent and you literally only have to flow once maybe twice to get it to the 49 percent density and remember as I mentioned in all special adjustment um, tools in here if you hit the letter spacebar it takes you to your zoom tool so that you can easily navigate around your image so lastly and what I want to leave you with is the shortcut T which is your toolbar and the reason why I want to leave you with this particular one is it's because this is the one I struggled with most so I'm gonna hit T you can see my toolbar at the bottom of the right bottom right hand frame disappears and every time I used to do a special adjustment and paint the sky whatever it may be I had to th then go and click on the brush again to end that action not knowing that T was the shortcut for toolbar and just by simply clicking done it automatically replaces that special adjustment I really do hope that this segment helps you when it comes to Lightroom, when it comes to your processing and hopefully speeds up a little bit of your processing. Until next time, have a good one. Cheers for now.